Welcome to Ready Steady Charge and welcome to Bella Bella. For those of you who know, I've moved here to this very remote place where there are no publicly available chargers, so no DC fast chargers, no level 2 chargers. I live here with my electric vehicle and just how do I charge it? Well, there is actually a very simple way to charge your EV almost anywhere. Come and let me show you. I have previously made a video about level 1 charging, but I want to make another video updating you on all the things I've learned throughout the years. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Lectron. Let's start from the basics. What is level 1 charging? Well, level 1 charging is quite simple. It is the use of a standard household outlet to charge an electric vehicle. And thankfully, all EVs can be charged this way. It is important to note that there is a difference in voltage coming out of your household outlet depending on where you live in the world. In Europe and Asia, you get 220 to 240 volts, and where I am right now in North America, it is 110 to 120 volts. Everything I discuss in this video will be according to the standards and specifications of North America, which is 110 to 120 volts. Practically, level 1 charging is extremely straightforward. The level 1 charger comes with a plug that plugs directly into the outlet on your wall. And once that is plugged in, the charger will be powered. And then on the other end of the charger, it usually comes with a connector that goes into your vehicle. Typically, this is a J1772 plug, and you can plug that directly into your EV. Once everything is plugged in, your vehicle will start charging. It really is that simple. And the best part is, almost all EVs come with a level 1 charger from the manufacturer, which means as soon as you get your vehicle, you can charge at home and you're good to go. For my Kona Electric, I am provided with a Hyundai branded level 1 charger. Now that we know what level 1 charging is, let's delve into some of the specifications. Now I'm going to talk about this information as an enthusiast. I am not an electrician, and if you are an electrician or someone with extensive knowledge, please make sure to share your knowledge in the comments below. First, it is essential to understand that level 1 charging is AC charging, or using alternating current. AC is what comes out of your household outlet. It goes into your vehicle and passes through the vehicle's onboard charger. The onboard charger converts AC into DC, direct current. And DC is what your vehicle's high voltage battery needs. This is different than DC fast charging or level 3 charging, where the charger supplies usually high voltage direct current. And this direct current goes directly into your battery. Next, let's talk about these household outlets. The typical North American household outlet supplies electricity in 120 volts, and this is what you will typically be using for your level 1 charging. The most ubiquitous type of household outlet is the NEMA5-15. This type of outlet can supply, of course, 120 volts, up to 15 amps. If you want to see how much power that is, you just multiply your voltage by your current and you get 1,800 watts. This is also 1.8 kilowatts. There is a different type of outlet which can be used for level 1 charging, and that is the NEMA5-20 outlet. This is an outlet that can supply, again, 120 volts, up to 20 amps. This type of outlet, I've noticed, are typically found in the kitchen or the bathroom. Thankfully, the level 1 charger plug can fit both types of outlets. Now that we understand the specifications behind level 1 charger, let's talk about just how fast or how slow level 1 charging actually is. If you have a level 1 charger that came from the vehicle's manufacturer, it's typically limited to 12 amps. And that is according to the National Electrical Code guideline. With 12 amps at 120 volts, your maximum charging speed is 1.44 kilowatts. Not that fast. 
If you opt for an upgrade and buy a third party level one charger, such as the Electron one that I'm using right now, you can go up to 15 amps. And 15 amps at 120 volts is equal to 1.8 kilowatts. A little bit faster. If you're interested in this Electron level one charger, follow the link in the description below. So yes, level one charging is pretty slow. To put into perspective, let's do an example. My electric vehicle, the Hyundai Kona Electric, has a battery capacity of 64 kilowatt hours. And if I want to charge this vehicle from 0% to 100% using the vehicle's manufacturer's level one charger, um, I will need about 50 hours to fully charge the vehicle. The real world charging speed of this manufacturer provided level one charger is between 1.3 to 1.4 kilowatts, which is not fast. If I switch to the Electron charger, um, it's a little faster. The real world charging speed of this charger is about 1.6 to 1.7 kilowatts. This takes the charging time down to 35 to 40 hours, which is still very long. Compare this to what an EV is capable of nowadays with DC fast charging, which can go up to 100 kilowatts, 200 kilowatts, 250 or even 300 kilowatts. This can charge an EV's battery from 0% to 80% in sometimes 20 or 15 minutes. So yes, level one charging is very slow. However, it is essential to remember that although level one charging is very slow, there are many advantages. First of which is the ubiquity of household outlets. If you're near civilization and you have a house or a building, chances are you have access to household outlets. In Canada, many parking lots come with outlets on every parking spot that are designed for block heaters. So wherever you have one of these household outlets, you can potentially charge via level one. Another advantage of level one charging is that using AC charging is actually quite good for your battery. Using a lot of DC fast charging can increase degradation of your EV's battery. So sticking to mostly AC charging is very healthy for your battery. And as a bonus, oftentimes charging at home is the cheapest option compared to paid level two chargers or paid DC fast chargers. While it is clear that level one charging is slow, its wide availability and affordability makes it suitable for a lot of EV drivers. But you may be asking yourself, what if I want something faster? Do I need level two charging? Now, before we discuss that, let's talk about in general terms what uh, level two charging actually is. Level two charging encompasses AC charging of an EV using 240 volts instead of the 120 volts of level one. And the charging speed can vary depending on what your charger is capable of, what your vehicle is capable of taking, and what the electrical system in your house or building can supply. And uh, the charging speed of level two charger can range between two kilowatts to around 11 kilowatts. That's the typical range. And in certain places in the world, 22 kilowatt AC charging at level two is also a standard. Whatever your level two charging speed is, it's going to be faster, sometimes a lot faster than your level one charging. However, before you rush out and get a level two charger, um, there are a couple of things to consider. I will give you an example of how I determined whether or not level one is good enough for me or I need to upgrade to level two, something faster. First, let's start off by assessing our daily driving needs. In other words, how far do I need to drive every day? Let's use my old commute in Edmonton for this. It's around 60 kilometers. I drive around 60 kilometers every day for my commute. And the next thing to consider is what is the energy consumption of your vehicle? Typically for EVs, the consumption is lower in milder weathers and higher in extreme cold. So if I average out the winter and the summer consumption, it averages out to about five kilometers per kilowatt hour. With this consumption information, for a 60 kilometer commute, I am predicted to use around 12 kilowatt hours of energy every day. And given that my vehicle has 64 kilowatt hours of battery, 12 kilowatt hours every day means that each day during my commute, I will use 20% of the EV's battery. 
Now that I know that I use 20% battery every day for commute, let's determine how much battery I can get from charging off of level one every day. Let's say I'm using the Electron's level one charger, which tops out at 1.8 kilowatts, and I come home and plug in my vehicle at 6 p.m. Then the next morning at 7 a.m., I unplug and go to work. That gives me 13 hours of charging time. For 1.8 kilowatts, that gives me 23.4 kilowatt hours of energy. This translates to around 37% of the battery gained overnight. So if I only use 20% battery, commuting my 60 kilometers every day, I can charge way more than what I need. And this tells me that level one charging should be suitable. However, you must keep in mind that the suitability of level one charging for your daily commute really depends on the efficiency of your EV. I consider my vehicle, the Kona Electric, to be quite efficient. If you drive a larger, heavier, less aerodynamic vehicle, or if you have a much longer commute, level one charging may not be suitable. It is also worth mentioning that some vehicles, like Tesla's, have features that drains your battery or uses energy when your vehicle is parked. Sentry mode, for example, typically uses between 200 and 300 watts of power. So if you're charging a level one, you need to take that loss into consideration. Depending on your vehicle and how cold it is, some EVs want to maintain a battery temperature above a certain point, especially in extreme cold. That also counts as energy loss. So you must take a holistic approach to determining if level one charging is right for you, including your commute, your vehicle's characteristics, and just where you live. Next, let's talk about safety and things that you should be careful with when you are doing level one charging. First, be cautious about drawing too much power and tripping your circuit breaker. Always know how much power your charger is drawing and how much power your vehicle is pulling. Your typical household outlet, the NEMA 5-15, has a maximum current of 15 amps. When you exceed 15 amps, the circuit breaker will trip. Um, if you're worried that you're going to be pulling too much power, or if there are multiple devices drawing power on the same circuit, you can actually reduce the charging current. This can either be done as a setting on your vehicle to reduce your charging current, or this can be done on your level one charger. Another concern is the risk of a burnt or melted plug. And this could happen for a couple of reasons. One of which is something we've discussed just previously, that you drew too much power. There was too much current and the plug melted or burnt. Another reason could be that the outlet itself is quite old, the insulation is poor, and there was a short circuit somewhere, and then your outlet burns or melts. The very last reason I can think of is the fact that the plug and the socket, their connection is loose. Sometimes I see people doing level one charging by dangling the entire weight of the charger off of the receptacle. This will create a loose connection, which can cause a spark, which can also melt or burn your outlet. So make sure the weight of your level one charger is supported so that not the entire weight is dangling off of the receptacle. When charging outdoors, or just charging in damp condition, it's very important to prevent water ingress. If water gets in your outlet, you can get a short circuit. Uh, many outdoor outlets come with covers, and you should definitely use those to prevent water from going into your socket as much as possible. I did find this other nifty little product to help in situations like this. This is a silicone spacer that fits onto your plug and uh, acts to create kind of a seal between your plug and your socket. Now, this is not 100% waterproof. In fact, it's not waterproof at all, but it's better than nothing. Are you concerned about someone stealing your level one charger? Well, <laughs> theft is always a risk. Um, most EVs can lock their chargers into the charge port. So this way you cannot actually pull the plug out of the charge port. 
but some people want a more secure option to prevent theft. I've seen people drive over the charging cable with their car, um, but that can damage the cable itself because, well, your, your vehicle is very heavy. Something you can do is to use a cable protector uh, under the wheel of your vehicle. This way your cable will not get crushed and uh, hopefully it's a good enough deterrent against theft. Lastly, let's talk about the use of extension cords when you're doing level one charging. If you look at official manufacturer's instructions, everybody says that you should not be using an extension cord when charging your EV. And I agree with that. But if you must, there is a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Number one is whenever you're using an extension cord, you must make sure that it either matches or exceeds the specification of your level one charger. If you are using a 15 amp level one charger, then your extension cord must be capable of either 15 amps or more. If you're using extension cord outdoors, make sure you're using an extension cord that has outdoors features that are capable of handling the outdoor environment. And of course, if you're using an extension cord, do not coil the extension cord. If you coil it, it can create excessive heat. And depending on your ambient temperature, if it's too hot, then your cable can melt. Now, level one charging isn't just for daily charging to keep your vehicle topped up every day before your commute. It can be useful in certain special situations as well. Sometimes unexpected circumstances or poor planning can leave you stranded with very low battery. This is where level one charging can save your day. Consider this. If you're in any civilized areas, most buildings or houses should have access to household outlets. And once you have those, you can level one charge. With permission, of course, you can charge for just enough to get you to your next DC fast charger. So level one charging can be used to rescue yourself when your battery is really low. When you're on the road and you're staying at either Airbnbs or hotels, level one charging can be a pretty convenient way to top up your EV. A lot of hotels come with level two chargers nowadays, but a lot of them still don't. So whether you're at a hotel or Airbnb, chances are you have access to some form of household outlet. With the permission of your host, you can definitely plug in and top up your EV overnight while you're sleeping. This way, you can save some money on uh, DC fast chargers. Now, let's discuss a unlikely but also intriguing scenario. Many EVs are capable of V2L. That is vehicle to load, which means the vehicle comes with a 120 volt outlet on board. So imagine you're in a situation where you're out of battery and you're stranded on the side of the road. And here comes another EV that is capable of V2L. You can potentially plug your EV into their EV and they can charge your vehicle up for you. Again, this is not a common scenario, but when it happens, V2L and level one charging can save the day. In summary, level one charging is not fast. In fact, it is very slow. But level one charging is very versatile due to the ubiquity of household outlets. Whether it is to keep your car topped up every day or when in use for emergency situations, level one has got you back. If you're interested in upgrading your manufacturer provided EVSE, the level one charger, to the faster Electron charger, uh, make sure you click in the link down below. And I certainly hope you enjoyed this video and found it very helpful. My name is Solomon. And we'll see you on the next one.